Boards and booze, booze and boards, drink some beers, fight some hordes, drank too much, forgot our swords, ran back home, filled our gourds, got drunk again, sang some chords, boards and booze, booze and boards, with Mickey and Jeb. Hi everyone, uh, booze and boards with Mickey and Jeb, Mickey, Jeb, Tonto Cure. <gasps> Yeah, what does Tanto Cure mean, Jeb? Uh, you forgot already. Yeah, it's in Italian. It is, help me out, it was mini hearts, much hearts. Something like that. Where yeah, much it? heart. Much there heart, it is, I got it. much heart. It's not small Japanese sword. Right? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, the first thing is our intro. <laughs> you want to tell them about the story? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so basically this game is a game, uh, it's a deck building game where maids serve you. So, I was going to have Jeb dress up as a maid, and I looked at Jeb, thought about him in a maid costume, and I spared you guys. <laughs> <laughs> he did you all a favor. <laughs> no, but seriously, that yeah. that is the premise of the game. Yep. Um, you're, it's a deck building game, so you're going to purchase, you're gonna, everybody's going to start with the same, same uh, hand of cards. You're going to purchase cards, um, mostly maids, and uh, they're, they're going to serve you, and that's how you build up your house. Yep. Uh, so, the, um, it's all the art's anime, so if you like anime, great. If you don't, um, whatever. I guess, I guess the other thing is, I'd say, <laughs> I, I put... Yeah, some of the art, I'd put it PG-13. A little risky, yeah. Yeah, so maybe not for your young kids, but I will say that none of the, I, I mean, like, none of the card themes or anything like that are yeah, suggestive. Yeah. It's just the artwork. So there's nothing wrong with the game, but if you're, uh, if you if you don't care for that type of art, there, there are some pictures that are a little risque. Um, other than that, um, we're going to... We'll stop here in a second, and we'll get to uh, set up. We'll, uh, we'll tell you about the cards and how the game sets up and everything, and then we'll be back with Haley and Kim to do a whole playthrough. Yep. Uh, other than that, what, two to four players? Uh, ages 12 and up is what it says. Uh, and it's released by Japanime Games and Arclight Games. Uh, I don't know if there's actually a, a name for the creator. I don't see one on the box. Probably that, and you can't read it. No, that's Tonto Cure. <laughs> All right, so yeah, uh, made by someone. Anyway, yeah, uh, it's a Im it's a import. Yeah, right? yeah, they they actually Con conversion from. Yep, they uh, they got the rights to it. They just all they did was translate it from Japanese. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, all right. So, Back in a second for the setup. Yep. All yeah. right, so we're here for setup. Uh, I guess the quick first thing we should say: the object of the game is to become the best master of the house by having. The best collection of maids, which means getting the most victory points. So, like all deck builders, you just go for victory points. Uh, I think the first thing we should do is show you what each of the card types are. So, uh, the first is the love cards. So, I'll let Mickey talk about those. Okay. Uh, the love cards are basically the money in this game. And as you can see, you have a 1, a 2, and a 3. And the cost of the cards are all in the upper left hand corner yep. those of are pretty all simple. the cards not just the love cards those are and so this cost four love this cost three love this cost two love etc etc the, the next type of cards are the made chiefs so all right so this is made chief they're uh, like turquoise they're or yeah they're like a greenish turquoise color which leads right into uh, the chamber made or, yeah, Chambermaid Chief, which is also a turquoise one. Um, that's right right here. Uh, the next type of card is a General Maid. Those and are the blue ones, and that's going to be your uh, main collection of cards throughout the game, for yep. the most part. Uh, after that is the Private Maids. Private Maids are these ones with uh, the black borders, and they operate a little different than almost anything else in the game. And the final card type is the, the event cards. And the event cards are the purple cards, and the event cards are basically so you can mess around with other people and do bad things to them. So in uh, in general, that's that's what the cards are. So um, I 
I guess we'll show you the uh, the makeup of the cards. Yeah, let's start with the uh, general, general maze. maze. Okay, so um, like like all cards, they have the the right. card type and the name at the top. Right. And then, as Mickey said earlier, to the left of that is how much it costs to employ them. And if it's worth any victory points, that would be in that corner, such as this card down here, the Azure Crescent Twins or whatever they yeah. are. So that would be worth a victory point. Um, the, the, I guess one thing to mention is that employ in this game is a term that is pretty much like buy in other deck builders. Right, you, yeah, you're hiring all the maids, so that's why they use the word employ. So the next, uh, of course, then you have your artwork, which if you like anime, the artwork and most of the artwork in this is really cool. Um, so then the the heart of the card is down at the bottom. It's going to be able to tell you what it does. So you have uh, four different sections down here that are either grayed out or they're highlighted. Um, the I'll start on the upper upper left portion right here. If you see my finger, that is the. Uh, allows you to draw more cards. Yep, it's just called the draw symbol. Right. And then right below that is the heart symbol, which gives you more love. More love. So that's the love symbol. Right. So if I if I play this then I will accumulate more buy power. And then the top right side with the little looks like a finger pointing is the serving symbol. And that is the amount of extra servings that are generated. Right. You start your turn with one serving and and uh, and one employment. And, and that, serving in this game is equivalent to the ability to play a card. Right. Yeah. Well, except for the love cards. Right. I should say it's the ability to play a maid. Yeah. yeah. And then the last symbol is the employment card, which is basically your ability to buy the buy or employ the maids. Yes, so uh, the love gives you, I guess, the money to buy the maids. Uh, that symbol in the bottom right, employment, is that, I guess, once per turn you're able to buy a card from the town. Right. If that is like a plus one, then on your turn you could buy two sure. cards from right. the town. So, very si very similar mechanics to if, if you all have played Dominion. Uh, actually, the, the, the mechanics uh, are, are exactly the same. You start your turn with one buy, or, or I'm sorry, you start your turn with play a card, buy a card. That's what you're allowed to do in general until you start earning other cards that let, let you do, do more. Yep. And then also on the made cards, there are effects that come in between uh, the symbols that we just talked about. Uh, one, you want to read one, just for an example? Yeah, uh, one quick thing mm -hmm. is that the timing of this, when you play a card, you gain all the effects from the symbols before the actual effect goes off on the card. So, for example, Esquine Foray says, you may discard up two cards from your hand. If you do, you gain uh, one serving, so that means it's going to allow you to play another maid per card discarded. Um, that's actually a really good example of what Jeb was talking about since all these go off first you would be able to draw the cards before you carried this out yep. and then do the discarding at that point cause, letting you do uh, an extra an extra serving uh, based on how many cards you got you discarded and obviously that's just one example and they're all going to have um, different different powers Yep. And then another thing, above the effect, some of the maids have a chambermaid cost, and that is a picture of the serving symbol, and then how many uh, servings it actually takes to chambermaid them. So this one has the, 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 er, the serving cost and then a one after it, so you would have to give up one serving to put her into your chambers. And we'll show you that when we go through the mechanics example. Um, on how all that works, uh, but just no, just just real quick, like the ones that have the chambermaid ability actually say chambermaid on the card. Um, this is a general maid, and notice that no victory points, and you can't make them a chambermaid. Yeah, and then over here on 
these two these two card types, the events and the private maids, they actually have above their effect uh, the phases that when their effects go off. So like this one says during your starting phase you get that ability or that effect. Right. And I think these will say like during whatever phase something happens. Well it's interesting to note about this pile here, uh, which I guess it's a good point to say right now, when you buy cards in this game, they go directly to your discard pile. Yeah. Um, which is very typical of most deck builders, not all, but most. Um, so this pile is kind of where the mechanics in this game get a little, a little bit different. They don't go directly, you get to use them uh, immediately. Uh, not necessarily the power, but you get to use uh, the card. They don't go into your discard pile, which is kind of, kind of neat in my opinion. And then I guess the last thing is, what are those blue cards up there? Okay, so the blue cards are basically your randomizers. So they'll have all of the maids exactly the same. So it's just a little deck so that you can quickly uh, shuffle them up and randomly pick what you're going to... Um, you use 10, so you deal 10 cards, and those are going to be the maids that you can use for the game. Obviously, you don't have to do that. You could do it in any method that you want, but just set up to the normal. Yeah, in the rule books, they have a suggested setup for first-time play, and also the, something to note is that those blue cards are not included in the base game. They came in the collector's box, so don't yeah. worry if you don't have full. I, sus I suspect you could. Yeah, that's that, that, that's a good point. I suspect that they might sell just the the randomizers. Most <laughs> most deck builders actually include them, so it was kind of probably it was probably an oversight, and they probably said had people going, "Where's the where's the randomizer?" So, anyways. Um, that's about it for types of cards, and we are going to stop real quick, reset up, and show you exactly how to set up, take probably two, three turns, yeah. and uh, so you can see the mechanics, and then we'll have Haley and Kim and go play a game. All right. Okay, so we're going to go through the uh, setup now, and we'll do a uh, quick couple turns so you can see how everything works. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to build the town because the town is the main uh, the main part of it and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to sort the chief uh, card, chambermaid card and the um, what's the other one called? Maid. Chambermaid chief and the maid chief okay and those are going to stack side by side somewhere yeah. And Jeb's going to make a pretty little town for you here. Right. So those go right there. And, and this is how they recommend to do it in the movie. You can do it whatever comfortable for you, but it actually is a pretty decent setup. Um, next, make sure you've sorted the illness and the bad habits and put those in piles. So scary. Those are the purple, purple framed cards. All these are, are face up so far. Okay, the second is to sort the love cards by uh, value, which is one, two, and three, and place them in the center. Uh, now we're going to have the, uh, the general maids, so we're going to take the randomizers so that we can actually do a randomized game. We're not going to play the, the uh, recommended first, first game because we've already played it and it's kind of cool to do randomizers. So, we've got... Claire St. Just, we have Saffron, Virgine, Virgini, uh, why do we have to read French names, Natsumi, Fuji, Ko, yeah, whatever, like, why isn't Jeb reading these, uh, Azure Crescent, I get to watch you suffer through it, <laughs> we have, Sansbury Lockwood, Ophelia Grail, where am I at? Six. Yep. Seven is Rogue Croissant, Nina Wilder, eight, and nine is Viola Crescent. Got all the sisters out. Yep, we did. And then Esquine Frey. 
and that's 10. So now we have those 10. The other ones will just go back in the box that you didn't use. All right. And then we are going to take... Oh, I went backwards a little bit on you, didn't I, Joe? That's okay. fine. Uh, take the private maids and shuffle them up. Those are the ones with the blackboards. You're going to place those ones face down and flip over the first two. Right. And uh, that is that is it for the board setup. That's the town. Right? And then to get your starting hand, you're gonna each player is gonna take seven one cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Jeb's gonna deal his own because he doesn't want me to touch his cards. And one, two, three of Colette. Not her, because she's uh, six victory points. Get any of those. All right, so like it's like all deck building games where you, everybody has the exact same starting deck. So this one is three, three uh, Colettes and seven love cards. Yep. So both of us have the same amount of cards in our deck. Gonna shuffle those up. Yep. And then you're gonna drive, draw five cards. So one, two, three, four, five. And I'll go first because I don't want Jeb to. All right. So, on my turn, I have a, I have one serving and one employment. Now, Colette is, I could play her as a serving, okay? She doesn't do anything, though. Uh, she has a bonus for the end of the game, but I'm going to play her just as an example of actually playing a maid. So that would be my whole, whole serving for the turn. And then I have four love cards. So I can go to into the town and I can buy anything that is uh, four or less. So I think I will start with, uh, I will buy one of these for two and one of these for two. You only have one serving. You can only buy one. Oh, you're one. right, you're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> I, I'm ahead of myself. I don't have any combos yet. So I'm going to pick. I don't think it matters too much, right? Not really. So he I, wants to beat me in a non-existent game we're playing. Yes. <laughs> I will take the draw card one. All right. So All right. And then at the end of your turn, everything goes to your discard pile. You don't keep any of your hand or anything else. And then you draw up. Once you've drawn up, then it's the next player's turn. All right. So it's my turn. I have the exact same hand as Mickey. So I have four love. So I will just buy this uh, three love. Uh, made and put her in the discard pile. I'll employ her, I guess I should say. Uh, everything in the discard, I draw my five cards, and it's Mickey's turn. And again, I have one serving, and I actually have two Colettes, but I can't put the other one down. Um, and I have three love. This would stay in my hand. I could buy a three card, so I will take a Claire because she's defensive put her in my deck, and then even the card in my hand this time will go away. And then the key thing as to all deck builders, Mickey has no deck now. And I, and I need to draw a card, so I will shuffle up, and then draw my five cards, and then it will be uh, Jeb's turn. It is kind of, in, it's a little bit important to make sure that, yeah, I, not always, but it's a good habit to get into if you let the person actually get their hand, because there yeah. will be cards that affect people's hands and things like that, typically in a deck building type game. Right. I have my cards now. I've got three love to spend, and I will buy the Claire that Mickey spent, or Mickey bought earlier, and then I have to draw up to five, i got to shuffle my deck, and then I draw. You, Mickey, you want to go? Okay, so um, here's a good example of a really horrid hand. I got all my Colettes, which can do nothing for me. But I do still have one serving, so since she does nothing, I'm going to play Viola, which gives me the draw. So I can immediately draw a card, which at least gave me another love, so I have two love to spend because I can't do any other servings. Jeb's going to say something now. No, no, I, <laughs> I, I think we should actually just go through and say each of the phases on the next turn, just okay. so they know everything sure. that they can do, so I'll do that on And I will take uh, this one. Alright, 
So Mickey's turn is done after he draws his five cards. Uh, and for my turn, I'll actually go through the actual phases. So the first phase is the starting phase. So uh, any private maids and event cards will take effect if uh, you have any. Uh, ill private maids do not get their effect. Uh, I can dismiss a three love card to get rid of an illness. That's actually on the illness card itself. So uh, that, that's all the stuff for the starting phase. Next is the serving phase. So I play maid cards from my hand. Uh, Mickey did that earlier where he played one. Uh, you automatically receive one free serving on your turn, so you can always play one maid. Uh, other maids will like give you extra effects. So in my hand, I've got four love and a Colette, so I, if I play her, she does nothing. So, wow, that was a wonderful serving phase. Uh, I can also play the love cards. Um, I think these can really be played in the serving phase, and then the next phase, the employee phase, it, they're not too strict on when you can play loves, uh, but I've got four of them. So in the serving phase, you get the free serving, you can spend it to play a maid. Uh, the phase ends when a player has no more servings to spend or maids to play. Uh, then the employee phase is you play your love cards and employ new staff. So I, like I just played all four of my love cards. I get one free employment, so as we did earlier, I could buy one card. So I'll buy this four girl, and she's in my discard. You can only employ uh, equal to the number of employments you have. When you employ a private maid or an event, they actually go to the private quarters. We haven't done anything with private quarters, but every player has a private quarter that is just off to the side. Yeah, I was going to show that in just a second. Okay. And then after that is the dismiss phase, where all staff that have served go to the discard. So like we did, we just discarded all the cards. Any cards in your hand are discarded. Uh, everything in private quarters remains, and then you draw five cards. So that's the, the structure of a turn. So Mickey, you want to do your turn? Yep. Um, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump ahead now, and I'm going to, I am going to cheat a little bit, and I'm going to say that I had this card in my hand already, okay? Okay. Alright, we're going to say that I had this card in my hand. It's my turn. And where is one of my... Just so you can see how this is one of the main mechanics of this game. So this is important. Alright, so I'm going to play this card. It's got a draw, so I can draw a card from my deck. Now, it has serving plus two. So I have a plus two serving right now. Because he spent... Uh one serving to play, play her, her, right? and then she gives two, so now he's at two. It's two. Now, if you look at Colette, the cost to chambermaid her is two. So I can say that I'm going to chambermaid Colette with the two servings that I still have, put her off to the side in my play area. She is now in, in the chamber section of your, your private chambers of your house. right? So she just stays there now. And most of the things that stay there have some kind of bonus condition. Most of I won't say everything. Some of them are just straight up victory points. Um, but if they don't do anything, they're not helping your deck, so they're kind of dead weight. Right? So that's how um, putting something into the chamber works in terms of is You have to have enough servings to put the card over there, then the card just sits there. Now, if I have enough money, which, oh, look, I do. I have five. Both of these private maids are five, so during the employment phase, I can take one of these. They don't go to the discard pile, they automatically go into my chambers. Okay? The important thing to remember about this is that Jeb pointed out earlier that their ability will tell you when it goes off. So this says during my starting phase, so I'm not going to get any ability now because my starting phase is already over. But every start phase, I'm going to automatically have an extra serving. Uh, to use. Um, they highlighted it and put it down here. That does not mean you get two. Right. They're just reiterating what you actually get on it. The other important thing to remember about this is this card immediately flips over. So there's another one. And if you ever buy another private maid, it goes, it replaces the one you have. You can't have more than one, so it would go on top. So whatever's on top is your active uh, active private 
made. And the victory points will still count at the end, but only the top ones active. Which brings me to the next section, which I will let Jeb talk about, and the events, because the events will work very similar to the private maids. Uh, Alright, so if, let's see, I've, in my hand I have two love to spend. So, actually I have a maid that if I play she gives me two love, so I have four love to spend. So I could buy one of the two event cards if I wanted. Uh, bad Habit is, it says, uh, I believe when I buy a Bad Habit, it has to go onto one of the maids. Oh. It just goes into the chamber. The Bad Habit oh, okay. just goes into it the It just chambers. goes into the chamber. So if I spent the two money on, the, or two love on this, it would just go into whoever's private chamber. I believe you have, or you have the, to have something in it. You yeah. can't just put randomly put stuff in. Yeah, and then it has an effect that says what it does. Uh, this one is, the, the right. more there are at the end of the game, it's negative points, uh, stuff yeah. like that. Uh, if I buy an illness, it That's says... the one that goes on the maid. Yeah, this says, this card is placed onto a maid in any player's private quarters. That maid loses her abilities and all victory points. So if I bought this, I could put this on top of Mickey's private maid, she loses her effect and her victory points. So if the game ended, she's useless to Mickey for victory points. Great. Um, now, is there any way I can get rid of that, Jeff? Yes. Uh, if you were watching and you caught it, at the starting phase you can get rid of a three love card from your hand. So if you have a three love card at the beginning of your turn, you can return it to the town and get rid of an illness. Okay, now remember that is it's specific in the rules, it's a three love card. It yep. is not three love. You cannot discard three ones to right. get rid of that. You have to have the level uh, three love card to get rid of it. And then at the start phase I would discard the love card and I would put this back into the town. Yep. Alright, so I think that's about it for... Yeah. And remember, the bad habits, you still have to have a maid in here. You can't start this like at the beginning of the game, when people don't have any maids in there, and start right. doing bad things to them. So there's a little bit of strategy, because you know that as soon as you start putting stuff over here, people can start messing with you. But the flip side of that is, if you hold all your cards, you might not be able to get your deck to do what you want it to do. Right. So. Uh, I guess the last thing before we go into the gameplay is the game end. The game ends when two of the maid piles run out. So that is that counts uh, all the general maids, both of the maid chiefs, and I believe when this this deck runs out, I guess. When this called. is empty, that counts. Yeah. Even though those are face up, when there's nothing left to turn over, it counts as empty. All right, and then at the end of the game, you count up all the victory points of all the cards that you own. Uh, check to see if anything subtracts or adds or negates the cards in your uh, private chambers. And then the winner is the one with the most victory points. Yep. So we'll start setting up uh, the game, and you'll see a gameplay of it. Hi. It's not on yet. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> now it's on. <laughs> all right. All right, so we're here with the Silly Twins. <laughs> Silly all twins! Uh, Alright, so it's That's our name now. me, Mickey, Kim, and Haley. We've got Tonto Cure set up. This is the town. It's actually the exact same as what we did in the the, the gameplay portion of the video. Uh, so, the yeah, really portion. Much. This is the gameplay portion. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Okay. <laughs> uh, the only difference is we shuffled up this with the two, so those two are new. Uh, everybody has their starting deck of ten cards that consist of the seven love and three Colette. Uh, beer portion, or booze portion, I guess. We just have... Nothing special. Yeah, nothing <laughs> special. No, that's a really good one. And Mickey and I have the... I didn't say it wasn't good beer, <laughs> I'm just saying it doesn't have a theme. <laughs> I'm drinking Shipyard. The pumpkin beer, right? Yes. And Jeb and I have... The German uh, Hefeweizen. What's Haley have? Haley has water. Water. Out of a, a, what is it, rescue animal cup. We got more. 
<laughs> Is that the one I broke last time? Yeah, she Kim got a couple more. So, so, so you helped us give more money to the animals. He broke a glass when I was in here. Oh yeah, it you see where I do down and <laughs> smash and shards oh, one nice. Wow, wow, Kim, did you she hear that? She spills all the secrets. Oh my god, she spills all the secrets. It's terrible. <laughs> all right, so uh, I think the videos with us in it have the most views. Alright, so we, everybody draws five cards. Everybody gets five. I already did that. Uh, I think if you put your stuff as close to the town as possible, they might be able to see what you play. Uh, I'm not guaranteeing that. Just like show what I'm doing and I'm playing it. Alright, so who wants to start? Me. Alright, Mickey. And I'm last. (laughs) Alright, so on my turn, since uh, it was... As we explained, Colette really doesn't do anything until she's a chambermaid. I have her, so I will skip my serving phase. Or, uh, yeah, my serving phase. I have four love, and I am going to buy... What does she do again? Not yet. I am going to take Claire. Alright. So Mickey draws back up to five, and it's my turn. I have two Colettes and three Love. The the two Colettes are kind of useless right now. So three Love to buy. Uh, what does this girl do? She's a chambermaid. And yeah, I'll buy her. She, what, Her effect doesn't matter right now. So, and Kim growled at me if you didn't hear that. So it is Kim's turn. Do I, I just play. I don't draw, right? Right, you just play. All right, I have two Love, which kind of stinks, but it's all right, I guess. I'm going to go with... One of the twins. twins. I have five love. Wow. Oh my gosh. Um. That's what you got there. Next yeah, that's right. She's gonna have a terrible. Oh, oh, I know I am. <laughs> um. Even though I have a lot. Brian Claire. Everyone's growling. <laughs> you didn't buy your trade info. I friends. didn't. Why? Because I wanted to make sure I had a Claire. Okay. Because you want to load me with the bonuses. You don't have any to yeah. with the Okay, I have three love, two Colettes. I can't do anything with Colettes, so I have three to buy with. I am going to copy jab and buy that one. Alright. I am now cycled through once. I have to reshuffle and draw. Alright, while he does that, I will explain these two, because Kim asked what they do. Uh, the first one is Rosa Topaz. She costs five to buy. During your starting phase, you gain one love. So if you get her in your private chambers, she gives one love each turn. And then the next is Faye Longfang. She is a six, and during your starting phase, you receive either plus one love or plus one, uh, what is it, employment? Employ? No, the, the oh, okay. where you can buy more. So it's a, either one love or one extra buy. So it is my turn. I've got four love and a Colette. I'll spend my four love on this little lady with a gun. So my deck's empty. This little lady with a gun. She is. Uh, I draw my five, and it's Kim's turn. I have five love. Um, I need to look at what these actually are. I'm going to go with her. I have two love and a thousand collets. And I'm gonna get one love. Um, yeah, unfortunately that's a terrible hand. Because literally, she gives me another serving. And I can't use the collets for anything. So I have one love to spend. And I will buy a love. You know, you could have put a call it in your thing, but you, no, you wanted your tune. Yeah, because you would... Oh, wait, never mind, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so on my turn, I get to actually use my employee for a maid that I bought, the little girl with the gun. Uh, she has a plus two cards, so I get to draw two the cards. The girl with the gun. And then her effect is, I, can di- I may discard up to two cards from my hand. If I do, I gain a serving per card discarded. I've got... Up to two. I'll discard. I get. Uh, crap. I'll discard both of them. Right? No. Uh, that's dumb. How about I do this? I discard a love and a Colette. So now I have two servings. 
I can spend the two servings to chambermaid the Colette, because that's what her effect is. So she's off in my... Woo! Elemis is for Jeb now. <laughs> oh, sh... <laughs> he forgets all the time. <laughs> I have three love, and I'm going to buy this defensive girl, because I remember they said that she's defensive. So that's it for my turn. I have four love. <laughs> I'm going to buy the little girl with the gun. <laughs> little girl with the gun. And I have two love. Oh, there goes Colette. Um... And I'm getting one love. I have five love. I am going to take Sainsbury Lockwood. Uh, she's like a conversion card. I can I can exchange one love from my hand for either a two love or a maid with an employment cost of four or less from the town. Oh, what is that? That's really, really good. good. But she gives you nothing. Does it? Yeah, I know, but having oh one in your deck is really, really good. Uh, well, crap. I guess on my turn, I'm going to play uh, Saffron Vir Virginia uh, with my serving. And what she does is give me two love. So that's it. Her other effect is when she's chambermated. So that's two love, three love, four love, five love total. I'm going to buy this little lady, the private maid Rosa Topaz. Jeb needs an illness. What's the new one, sir? The new one is Sora, I can't pronounce that, and during your starting phase, you may move one event card from a private quarters of your choice to an equivalent place in another player's private quarters. Oh, that's a Jeb card. <laughs> that's a Jeb card. Oh. That's seven. Is it my go? That's yeah, expensive. Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to play Miss Lockwood, which will let me exchange a one love card with either a two love or something four or less. So I'm going to go with the two love. So then for my love part of the round, I have four. So I'm going to go ahead and... Hmm. This is tough. Let me look at this. I'm gonna go with her. I have four love, and I'm getting the little girl with the gun. Everybody wants to be like Jeff. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I have Claire. I'm gonna play Claire, and I don't. Her effect won't go off because I have no events in my private chambers. Um, it gives me another serving. So then I will play Saffron, which will give me a plus two heart. And then I will play a run love so that I have a total of three to buy with. And I have one employment, so I will buy another Saffron. Alright, my turn. Uh, at the beginning phase, or the starting phase of my turn, I get a love because of my private maid. Uh, I will play... Saffron, so that she gives me two love, so I'm at three love right now, and then four love, five love total. Five love will give me. Uh, I'll go for her. That's it for me. I have two love. I'm gonna buy one of the twins. I'm gonna play the child with a gun. Two cards. <laughs> Spend four love and two love. Skip my serving phase, four love, and I will join Girls with Guns. Girls with Guns. Alright, at the beginning of my phase, I get a love. I will play her, the girl with the gun, to draw two. And if I discard two, that would mean I could chambermaid Colette, which I'll do, and then I have three, four money total to buy with, and I am going to buy, uh, that girl. Here we go, Kim. Alright, I'll play gun girl, <laughs> um, so I get to draw two with that. 
Now I can discard up to two cards, and each one will give me a serving if I do that. I'll discard a one love to give me a serving, so then I'll play this Lockwood. So I'll exchange a one love for a two love. And then I will go ahead and I have four love. So if I buy this thing, it would go on there. You can play pretty room for one. Right yes, it would. And, let, and now remember, he does have one. Uh, he has one player yeah. somewhere in his deck. It right. may or may not be in his hand at no, this point. I'm going to go ahead with this one. It's getting low. Jeez, we haven't barely even started. Okay, a four love. That is a big difference with this game with four compared to two it's people. A lot faster. Well, I, I, I almost feel like you, like with four people it should be three piles instead of two. But Because yeah. I had a feeling this was going to happen. That one's low and this one's low already. Alright, so I have Sainsbury Lockwood, that's the exchange card, so I will exchange one a one love for a two love, that will give me a total of five, and I'm going to purchase this one, and Alright, I get a fruit one love for my private maid, I will play, ooh, actually, oh my gosh, can't catch a break. Uh...